Matt and Janet Thompson left the United States and came to Australia in 2001 with three things. Their 11 month old daughter, their life savings and a dream. The dream was to build their own business, a beef cattle feedlot, something both had worked hard for all their lives. They dreamed of carving out a living for themselves while growing their family and enjoying life in regional Western Australia. Matt and Janet were on hold over a year getting environmental approvals to begin with. They were approved to build a 15,000 head feedlot 4.5 kilometres south of the Narragin town site in a rural zoning. The Thompsons then proceeded to build the feedlot to 10,000 head capacity, hired upwards of 20 full-time equivalent employees and purchased close to 10 million worth of inputs annually, mostly from locals. When they applied to operate the final stage of development, up to 15,000 head of cattle as originally planned and approved, and with the ongoing support of local government and local people, the state's department environment changed the rules of the game. Because of a vocal minority, fewer than 20, complaining about odour, the DEC increased licence conditions from 8 to a draconian 33 and limited the throughput to 6,000 head. And the Thompsons told regulators on numerous occasions that they could not cash flow the investment at the reduced occupancy rate. The same government department that had given them approval in 2002 shut them down anyway. The business now lies empty and quiet. No employees, no economic activity and no end to their battle in sight. Matt and Janet owe millions of dollars to good people who trusted them enough to do business with them. Their family of employees are scattered with one family breakup and another suicide. Creditors, including local farmers and businesses, are hurting from the unpaid invoices. The Thompson family, now four children strong, all Australian citizens, risk losing their home, their vehicles and their freedom to do business in future. The dream has turned into a nightmare. In their own words, here is Matt and Janet's story. It is our hope that our story will shed some light on the true scope of the problem with environmental extremism greenhouse gas abatement measures, and the erosion of private property and free speech rights. We immigrated from the United States to Western Australia after purchasing land in 2001 for the sole purpose of building a beef cattle feedlot south of the regional wheat belt town of Narragin, two and a quarter hours inland from Perth. Since childhood we had dreamed of coming to Australia. We came with our own life savings and hope for our future in the obviously wonderful country of Australia. There was opportunity in the wheat belt of Western Australia. There is a beautiful climate, good quality cattle, and millions of tons of grain currently being exported. We came to live. We and our four young children, three of whom have been born in the local hospital, are all now Australian citizens. We took much care and spent significant time in planning the site-specific feedlot project from an environmental, an animal welfare, and a financial perspective. Upon submitting the final plan to relevant authorities, we were on hold for over a year getting our approvals. We're not sure what the Department of Environment did during that year. The local authority, the Shire of Narragin, required us to give an open public meeting outlining our proposal to the public. They asked for written submissions and received an overwhelming positive response while a few were adamantly opposed. Still today, after eight years, the vast majority of the public supports the project while a small group adamantly opposes it. There is a high degree of interest in our development, mostly from people that are interested in economic activity and ensuring that our community grows and thrives with real, productive businesses providing a base for that local sustainability. The first post went into the ground at Narragin Beef Producers in February of 2003, and the first cattle went on feed in June of that year. The concept proved to work very well in our location and climate, and the facility and business expanded to a holding capacity of 10,000 head of cattle. Complaints, usually based on odor, against our facility were made almost from the beginning. There is a 12,000 head intensive piggery directly adjacent to our property which had been there for 20 years and about which this same group of complainants had bitterly complained prior to our purchase. In July of 2007 we presented our plans for the final stage of development up to the originally planned and approved 15,000 head to an open public meeting attended by 120 people. We were given a rousing ovation. 
As president of the WA Lot Feeders Association, I attended a meeting on the 17th of May 2007 between environmental departments, environmental groups, and industry to discuss transitioning the National Pollutant Inventory, or NPI, system to the National Environmental Protection Measures, or NEPM system, and including so-called greenhouse gases in the required reporting regime. The meeting was supposed to be an open forum on this topic. At this meeting, I questioned the inclusion of greenhouse gases in the new reporting and expressed doubt about the entire theory of anthropogenic global warming. I handed out copies of the Great Global Warming Swindle DVD, as well as papers from the Lavoisier Group, to support my assertions. I did not expect those that convened the meeting to agree, or even the majority in attendance to necessarily agree with my point of view. I did, however, expect that I would be able to state my views without fear of retaliation. Soon after this meeting, the Department of Environment and Conservation began to increase their reliance upon complaints against our business and actively solicited complaints. The correspondence with DEC increased dramatically after this meeting. Also after the May Greenhouse Gas Policy Meeting, the Environmental Defenders Office or EDO, a state and federally funded not-for-profit organization, got involved with the small group of local complainants. The handful of complainants were incorporated and they learned from the EDO how to file writs and appeals and how to, in general, gum up the works so that our business would fail. In early 2008 we hired attorneys in Perth as it had become apparent that a positive outcome was not going to be forthcoming with the DEC. After getting up to speed on our case, the solicitor and the barrister suggested that we meet with Dr. Johannes Schumbe, an environmental attorney skilled in these matters. His web page referred to his expertise in property rights, among other things, so we agreed. Dr. Schumbe advised us that our original approval for a 14,940 head cattle feedlot had no legal standing in the law and that we should apologize to the DEC for our development. He advised that he knew important people in DEC and that we should begin a long series of meetings which he would coordinate for a fee. His fee for this original meeting, which took 40 minutes, was $4,000. Since we had complied with every license condition and every request for more work or more information from DEC, and because we could not afford to pay him on an ongoing basis, we declined his further involvement. In 2009, we discovered that Dr. Johannes Schumbe was the convener of EDO. EDO's own documents listed the fight against Nairge and Beef as one of their major accomplishments. Dr. Shumby was named Attorney of the Year in 2008 for his work with EDO of WA. Dr. Shumby never disclosed to us or even attempted to allude to any such connection.